Congo's families want to ride this wave and tide over poverty. Sending their children to the mines is not a choice for them, but necessity. These children end up working as artisanal miners or informal workers. They're not employed by any company, but several companies line up to buy their fines. You see, it is cheaper to buy cobalt from a child than a regulated mine. And who understands business better than China? Most of these companies dealing in blood batteries are from China. It dominates the global supply chain of cobalt. China owns up to 50% of the metals production. It controls around 80% of cobalt's refining. In the last 15 years, Chinese companies have bought out North American and European companies mining in Congo. Today, Chinese firms own 15 out of the 19 industrial mines in this country. In exchange for Congo's Kobol, China has promised the country billions in investment in the form of infrastructure, schools and roads. Now, Congo is another example of how stories featuring China never end well. Today, China is leaking blood cobalt into the supply chain of electric vehicles. Chinese companies are buying cobalt from children, encouraging them to participate in the trade of blood batteries. One of the largest cobalt processors in Congo is a company called CDM, or Congo Dongfang Mining. It is a subsidiary of Zhejiang Huayu Cobalt, a Chinese company, of course. Huayu supplies cobalt to electric car makers like Volkswagen. 40% of Huayu's cobalt comes from Congo. Okay, so another form of slavery. And uh, that's really all there is to it. And of course, not all forms of slavery are the same. There's all kinds of slavery. And I'm sure that you know that by now. Um, I think I mentioned brick kiln slavery earlier. Um, of course, there's organ harvesting, there's human trafficking, there's, I, there's that could be labor trafficking. Uh, it could be sex trafficking. Uh, there's so many. But one of the things that's often not talked about is that some of the child slaves that are forced to work, they're doing it. The parents are the ones that are putting them in this mix. Now, I forgot the, is it Cambodia? Cambodia, and not to cross the, the messages here, but in Cambodia, it's really common for the family. Like if you have a girl, it's, it's considered to be a golden ticket. And what I mean by that is that if you have a girl, that means you can send her off to be a prostitute. Same in Thailand um, and other parts of the world. I mean, again, the sex trade is different everywhere you go. But a lot of times families feel that they have no choice but to sell their children. So here in the Congo, uh, where this is happening with the blood batteries, these children are forced to go work. And it's heartbreaking. Like, there's just, like, what else do you say about it? And I don't have a solution. I mean, don't buy an electric vehicle. I mean, is that the solution? I don't know. I don't know. But there's so much more. There's a deeper dive into this. And I have another clip to play uh, to close, close this out. And I'm going to include the full episode. And then again, there is so much information about this. Like this is not a secret. It's just not talked about that much. But I'm gonna play another clip after this. I'm gonna go through a few of the talking points that I have prepared. Um, and I hope at, at, at least that you can pray, you know, for a solution or something. But I wanna be part of the solution on this. I wanna end slavery, period. And frankly, we're all slaves in our own way. It could be a slave to addiction. It could be slave to debt. There's all kinds of ways that we're enslaved. We could be a slave in our own home because we are held captive by an abuser. Like those things happen. So I want to eliminate slavery everywhere, everywhere. And it's not exactly easy, but that's my heart's desire. And I especially want to be able to work. When I shared my vision at the opening of this broadcast, it, when I, when I talk about the kids I wanna help, I wanna help 
Because see, I believe those kids there that are the, the slaves that are doing this work, digging for cobalt, they have gifts, they have talents, and it's not being used. And I promise you, if they were given the opportunity to use their gifts and their talents to make a life for themselves, they would do that over being a slave any day, all day. How many of us would? If you're not raising your hand right now, maybe you're already living your dreams and God bless you. I don't know. Or you're never mind. There's a better way. This is this is not it. So we get into this. So what are blood batteries? Blood batteries refer to batteries made using minerals like cobalt, which are sourced from conflict zones. These minerals are essential for making lithium ion batteries found in smartphones, laptops, and electric cars. These are, these are the ethical concerns. Child labor. In countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, children as young as seven are involved in the dangerous task of mining cobalt. They work in hazardous conditions, often without safety equipment. This one, war financing. The revenue generated from the sale of these minerals often go into financing armed groups and perpetrating conflict in these regions. In the same way, the drug trade funds wars, same difference. You really want to be pro-war? We got the wrong enemy. We are looking at the wrong enemy. <laughs> we the people, the citizens of this world are not the enemy. It's the people in charge. Because this is what's happening. This happens. I'm going to stay on topic and not lose my mind. There's technological alternatives. Green batteries. Researchers, researchers are working on developing alternatives like solid state batteries, which are not only more efficient, but also don't require conflict minerals. Recycling. Recycling programs can help reduce the demand for new minerals. Only 5% of lithium ion batteries are currently recycled in a closed loop. Wow. Consumer choices. Consumers can opt for products that use ethically sourced materials. Some companies provide information on the origin of the minerals used in their products. Now, those are some solutions. These are, these are alternatives that have been brought. How much funding are we gonna have for these things? Are we going to see our governments, our Congresses, our parliaments, are we gonna see them push money to these agendas or is it gonna be all Green New Deal, Paris Climate Act, all that crap? That's leading to, never mind. I'm gonna stay on top. Consumer, I already said that. Okay, so here's some regulatory uh, measures that could be done too. Transparency. Companies should be required to disclose their supply chain practices, allowing consumers to make informed decisions. The government's role. Governments can impose sanctions and regulations to ensure that companies are sourcing minerals ethically certifications initiatives like the fair trade certification for minerals can help consumers easily identify ethically sourced products i love that i love that you know and the, the problem okay so here's here's a potential problem to that 
It, I mean, fair trade is actually pretty legitimate from what I understand, but you know, those of you who know about organic labeling, organic doesn't always mean it's not 100% organic. Like it doesn't always mean that. It has to be 93%. So, you know, labels can be deceiving and there's always a little fudge room when it comes to certifications. It just is. I, In every certification I've ever been, been involved with, whether it's an FDA uh, approval or authorization, uh, whether whether it's a certification for you know a, a, a course, there, there's always a little bit of fudgery that is allowed. Always, I've never seen it not, never. So I don't know if fair trade is 100% on the up and up, but it's pretty dead gum close from what I can tell. Here's some social responsibility, corporate accountability. <laughs> I mean, look. If all the corporations in, in the world, the main corporations can sign a corporate accountability declaration with the Pope from the Vatican, it's in the Vatican paper, you can Google it, it's there. It happened right before uh, COVID happened in 2020. Very easy to find on the internet, it's still there because it just did a talk about it. It's worth looking at. Um, so, I mean, I know corporations can get together and you know come together in agreement on a plan i know they can because it's happening right now and that's another conversation companies have a moral obligation to ensure their supply chains are ethical corporate social responsibility initiatives can play a role in this they should they should they should they should they should guess what we have to be the ones to hold them accountable because they're not going to volunteer to do it if it hurts their pocketbook and it affects their tax, uh, not tax, it affects their stock value or the value of their company, they're not gonna do it. But let me give you, let me give you something that may change your mind a little bit. So when I worked in healthcare, my very last job before I started down this path that I'm on now was negotiating contracts with insurance companies. You know, so for disabled people, um, that they could get access to their medical equipment. Like there's, you know, insurance companies are always trying to cut the budgets, uh, make it hard. I don't know if you've ever, you know, had to buy medical equipment before and had a really large copay, um, or it was outside of the allowable that you were given. Cause you know, everything has a code, like uh, a basic power wheelchair at that time was a K11 is what we called it, which was K0011, but we called it K11 and it had a, um, that $5,845 was the scheduled amount that it was allowed. So that means anything you could buy the wheelchair, like you were going to get paid $5,845 if Medicare and the secondary insurance paid for it. So if you don't have the secondary insurance that you'll, though there's a 20% remainder, but typically you, there was enough money at the beginning there was enough money in there where you could write that off. Well, then Medicare started changing that and then started cutting the allowables. So it was killing profits and so forth. Um, what was I going with this point? Oh my God. I over explained myself and forgot where I was going to go with that. Um, the, the allowables, uh, government responsibility, that sucks. I can't believe I just brain farted that bad. Oh, that's embarrassing. There really was a point to me telling you about this. Allowables, anyway. So wait, corporate, nope, that's not it. Public awareness, okay. Let me just keep talking and then maybe it'll come to me. The more people know about the issue, the more pressure there will be on companies to change. Social media campaigns, documentaries, and public talks can help spread awareness. Um, I really wish I could remember what I was saying, but yeah, it's important. Like, listen, we know that this is a problem. We can organically speak about it if we care about it. We talk, we, we find ourselves in these arguments about election fraud or COVID or, you know, to be vaccinated or not. And we, we, we fight about who the best quarterback is, who the worst quarterback is. My baseball player is this. I mean, what we we what was on TV last night? But issues that, in fact, actually, and the other thing too is that a lot of times what you see on social media are people parroting, parroting. 
the talking points that they saw on the news. So that's what they're sharing, but really have no standing to be able to speak to the subject because they're just recycling what's been told to them. But when you see the information for yourself and you see that, oh, that these are, this is factual information. Okay, whoa, holy crap, this is affecting my life. Should I do something about it or not? That's up to you to decide. But what would feel better? To take a stand for something that you believe in, something that you know for a fact is affecting you, affecting your children, affecting your future, affecting your well being, but you knew for sure because you knew for sure because you saw the evidence yourself or what you see on the meat and through the media, which is an opinion basically disguised as fact. Somehow that happened. I don't know how that happened, but when you see factual evidence of something, wouldn't it be better to draw attention to that, that the thing that you can prove that the thing that if you were to have someone come and argue with you or to try to say, Hey, you know, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> and, and, and the way that they try to say that you're wrong for your opinion is by giving a talking point that they saw through the media. You know how easy it is to one, identify those people that only watch the news and then the people that, and, and then you, you can identify them pretty quickly, but then you can also shut them down in a hurry. Why? How? Well, because they can't go past the talking point. There's no true evidence to anything. None. Because a pie graph is not evidence. But when you're being presented information, boom, 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 that you can verify on your own, independently, what are you going to do about it? Listen, I'm an activist. I don't want to tell anyone to go out and boycott anything. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not that guy. But instead of supporting these organizations that are contributing to the problem, how about contributing to the people that are bringing a solution? Because you don't have to say, I'm boycotting blank company. You don't have to do that. You don't have to say, I'm never using plastic again. You don't have to say it. You, you could, could. You better hope that you're serious because the next time you're drinking plastic, after you're talking about plastic pollution and how bad it is, you better be prepared not to use plastic again. Or you could just reuse the plastic. I don't know, but, and then also like money that you support, there's nonprofits that are helping with plastic pollution. There's nonprofits that are helping fight blood batteries. I think bloodbatteries.com is a website or bloodbatteries.org is an organization that is fighting against blood batteries. It's org.com. Check them out. Um, so yeah, these are the, these are very, an overview. Not a lot of detail because we'd be here for five hours. And I believe that sometimes the message can get lost in the detail, which I know detail is important, but detail is important for the people that want it. So if you want more information, I've got a whole bunch of it and I'm happy to send it to you. Um, and if you're somebody that's an expert in this, or if you even have a disagreement about anything I just said, say it, speak it, come on and Come on the show, let's talk about this. Because I don't want to just say this is all bad, even though slavery is bad, even when it's the only option some people have. I would rather bring solutions to the table because solutions give people an opportunity to meet at the middle. Solutions tend to not hurt other people solutions can bring people together and ultimately that's what i'm here to do now 
I don't believe that there's healing that can be done without truth. I don't believe that, you know, you can go through life being naive. Um, I mean, I guess you could do that, but I don't believe that that helps anything. It's good to be informed, but what are you being informed about? And, uh, but it's no good to complain. In fact, it's no, I don't even know if protest even works. If protest in the form of going out and destroying people's property and screaming at other people and calling people idiots on social media and that kind of stuff. I don't believe that that's really going to help anything because I know that when I'm called an idiot, I know what I want to do. And it's typically not give that person a hug or smile and say, Jesus loves you. I think that's just not what I want to say. I may say that. I may say, bless your heart. But if you know what bless your heart really means, then <laughs> it's not so nice. <laughs> you stupid idiot. Anyway, no, I don't want to. I'm just kidding. Anyway, this subject sucks. It does. But, you know, maybe together we can bring a solution. So I've got one more clip here. And this gets into the child labor aspect. So now that you have that meat in the middle there, now's the... Now's the end. And hopefully when you watch it and see it through a different lens than you saw the first time, nonetheless, thank you for watching. Um, I'm not coming back after this clip, but I will see you on episode four. Thank you for your support. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing with friends wherever you're watching or listening from. My name is Joshua T. Berglund, and this is the World's Mayor Experience. Thank you. From Congo. In 2016, the Chinese company was called out by an NGO. It was branded a benefactor of child labor. Huayu pledged to clean up its act. But did anything change on the ground? Reports raise serious doubts. This is one part of the story. There is blood in China's large scale mines, too. There, workers are abused, discriminated, beaten, and made to work without contracts and sufficient ration. One worker told the media, and I'm quoting, if a worker dies, the Chinese don't report it to the government. They bury the person hiding the corpse and bribe the family to keep quiet. That's your electric car killing people even before it hits the road. Did you sign up for this? The world's biggest car makers are complicit in these crimes. I'm talking about the likes of Tesla, Volvo, Renault, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, they all source cobalt from Chinese mines in Congo. Sure, they claim to have a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to child labor, but they too know that there is no way to fully map their supply chains. Back in Congo, President Felix Shishikedi has pledged to act. In 2019, he established a state-run company to focus on health and human rights. But that hardly helps when Congolese officials are accused of overseeing child labor. In 2020, Tesla announced it would start using cobalt-free lithium-ion batteries in its electric vehicles, but the company followed up the announcement with a deal with Glencore. It's a cobalt mining company, and this deal was for 6,000 tons of cobalt a year. 6,000 tons a year. Doesn't add up, does it? Much like the claim of electric cars being clean, these cars run on dirty energy, on blood batteries. And this is not climate solution. This is human rights abuse. And the two cannot coexist. Climate solution is not supposed to be at the expense of human lives. Long story short, electric vehicles have miles to go before they can claim to be clean. <laughs> <laughs>